Welcome to another episode of the Knudsen Garden Update. We are in the classroom today where we have a really cool group of organisms which we've collected and uh, we're going to talk about them. Our journey to get here to the classroom with these little guys starts in a place called El Dorado Canyon. So let's uh, zoom in there and uh, we'll talk about what we found there, what's in here, and why we care about that for our garden. So our journey to get these guys into our terrarium really starts in El Dorado Canyon, which is part of the Lake Mead Recreational Area and is part of the El Dorado Wilderness, which is one of my favorite places to go. And a week and a half ago, I went out hiking in the El Dorado wilderness and kind of have to drive on some dirt roads to get there. Any of you who've ever been to Placer Cove have uh, driven by this area. As I got uh, over there, I started walking down one of my favorite washes and I started noticing some really cool things. Sure, there were creosotes. There's always creosotes. There were some milkweeds there, and I was hoping to see some monarch caterpillars on them. Didn't see monarch caterpillars. Instead, though, I saw a lot of yellow cups, which is a kind of plant, and on the yellow cups were these guys. This is really cool. This is what we call a white line sphinx moth caterpillar. And as you can see, they were loving the yellow cups. They were devouring them. Every yellow cups plant had at least one, some of them two or three of these voracious caterpillars chewing up all of their leaves. Poor, poor yellow cups. There's a picture of them. Some of them were longer than my longest finger. They're really cool. They've got this horn on the end. Sometimes they're called horn worms. So I captured some, brought them back to the classroom. Turns out they also really like grape leaves. So I brought some grape leaves in, and uh, this caterpillar here has been munching on a grape leaf. He loves it. Which brings us to why we should care about the white line sphinx moth caterpillar. Turns out the white line sphinx moth is one of the most common abundant moths in North America. They're everywhere. And they love all kinds of plants. They will lay their eggs on over 8,000 confirmed and uh, suspected host plants. They will eat up grapes. They also will eat tomatoes and members of the nightshade family like peppers. They also, believe it or not, will eat brassicas. So cabbages, broccolis, kale. These guys will eat just about anything. Um, and as you can see, they're pretty big. Uh, farmers who grow these crops have to be on the watch for an infestation of white line sphinx moth caterpillars because they will tear through your crops. They are a real nuisance, but they're also really <laughs> cool. Uh, they're not monarch caterpillars. They don't turn into butterflies. Instead, they are moths. And... Uh, you might think, well, what, what's the difference between a caterpillar and a moth? Well, they're both Lepidoptera. Uh, caterpillars will have uh, almost like a club-shaped antenna, whereas moths don't. Moths have kind of a more powdery wing. Um, they're sometimes a little furry, but they're all uh, pollinators. And it turns out that the white line sphinx moth is a great pollinator. It moves a lot of pollen around. But those caterpillars, boy, if they get into your crops, you better be ready for some crop loss. Um, so we've been keeping these three in our, ca in our uh, classroom. 
Uh, some of you have been wanting to name them. I know that Ms. Cruz in the counselor's office has named one of them Charlie. She likes Charlie. Uh, but we've been watching these guys for the past uh, week and a half as they've eaten and eaten and eaten and eaten. And there's Charlie eating away, getting fat, getting big. But here in our garden, we got to worry about these guys. So here's a tomato plant that Ms. Rusk's class has been growing. They've got some cabbage that, they've, that they're growing. There's another tomato plant. These tomato hornworms that sphinx moths uh, become are a real menace. So you got to watch out for them. Now, of course, uh, sphinx moth caterpillars aren't the only kind of caterpillar out there. We've also got our milkweeds. We've got our rush milkweed here in the garden that we've been growing. And we've got our desert milkweed, our Asclepius erosa, which is also uh, very popular among the caterpillars of the monarch butterfly. We don't have any caterpillars uh, yet. We don't always get caterpillars on our milkweeds. We cross our fingers. We hope they'll come. But uh, as you may know, monarchs are on the verge of becoming endangered. They've been having some trouble. So we grow our milkweeds to help them out. Now, if you notice on our milkweeds, it's kind of hard to see. They, they are very shy. But we've also got some milkweed bugs, which are part of the ecosystem on our milkweeds. We've got uh, milkweed bugs. Aphids love our milkweeds. We always get aphids on our milkweeds. But we usually get milkweed bugs too. Little uh, red, black, and white uh, insects. And they're just part of the overall ecosystem for our rush and desert milkweeds. If we walk over here, we can check to see if there's another, uh, another possibility of seeing uh, caterpillars on this rush milkweed under our pomegranate. I check these every day. It doesn't look like we have any monarch caterpillars <laughs> on here either. So let's head back to the classroom and take a look at our white line sphinx moths, which at this point, if we look carefully, they have started to go into cocoon. It's really interesting. They start producing silk, as you can see there. And they use that silk to help form a little protective den for themselves. So we've got two of our caterpillars that are starting to pupate. They uh, produce this silk that kind of holds together leaves and sticks and debris, kind of forming a little fortress for themselves. Um, so it's kind of hard to see. We'll uh, see if we can get a little better look here. Yeah, there we go. There is a cocoon starting to form. So that's Charlie. He's going to emerge pretty soon. So very, very cool stuff. All right, so that'll wrap it up for another episode of the Knudsen Garden Update. We've got our white line sphinx moth caterpillars happily pupating in their cocoons. So have some good food, be safe, and we'll talk to you soon.